The celestial chariot of the Anunnaki cleaved through the cosmos, a gleaming silver vessel against the backdrop of infinite stars. Its destination, a young Earth, vibrant and teeming with potential, a colony planet marked by the gods in a time where history had not yet been written. Approaching atmospheric entry, intoned Enlil, commander of this expedition, his voice resonant within the confines of the ship's command chamber. His piercing gaze, fixed on the azure sphere below, betrayed an eagerness akin to that of a conqueror eyeing unclaimed territory. Prepare for descent, he ordered, his fingers dancing across the holographic control panels that materialized before him. The crew members, beings of imposing stature and regal bearing, moved with practice efficiency, each well-versed in their ancient craft. As the chariot penetrated the planet's atmosphere, sheets of water vapor shrouded its descent, droplets spattering against the hull like cosmic applause. Below them, stretches of endless expanse of ocean, the waters whispering secrets of the deep. Enlil, the planet is cloaked in water, observed Ninirta, his second in command, who stood at the observation deck, his hands clasped behind his back. Where shall we establish the Eden? Enlil's mind churned with plans of grandeur, visions of verdant gardens and towering ziggurats rising from barren canvas. He replied without turning, Begin the terraforming sequence. Unleash the Bamu. Ninirta nodded and relayed the command. Moments later, the underbelly of the vessel opened, releasing a swarm of machines, the Bamu. They were titanic engines of creation, Forged in the hearts of Nibiru, the Anunnaki homeworld. As the machines descended gracefully into the water's surface, they commenced the symphony of transformation. With a thunderous roar that echoed across the heavens, the Bamu activated, churning the waters with cyclonic fury. Land masses emerged, thrusting upward from the unseen forces, as if the planet itself were giving birth to continents. Within the vessel, Enlil watched satisfaction swelling in his heart. This was the dawn of a new epoch, the shaping of the world that would echo the glory of the Anunnaki. See how easily chaos is tamed in our hands, he mused, his voice tinged with pride. Indeed, master, replied Ninirta, still at the viewing point, witnessing the manifestation of order. The earth yields to your will. In the silence that followed, Enlil pondered the future. His ambition was as boundless as the oceans below, yet a flicker of uncertainty crept into his thoughts. Could this nascent planet truly sustain their lofty aspirations? Would the annals of time remember this moment as the beginning of a golden age, or the harbinger for unforeseen tribulations? Let the chronicles show that on this day we, the Anunnaki, have claimed this world, Enlil declared, his voice cutting through the hum of machinery. And let it be known that by our power, land has risen from the deep. By your decree, Enlil, affirmed Ninurta, bowing slightly, acknowledging the weight of his leader's resolve. Outside, the bomb moon continued their work, sculpting the raw elements with divine precision. Mountains pierced the sky, valleys carved their way into the crust, and plateaus spread out like canvas, awaiting the brushstrokes of life. As the first rays of sunlight kissed the newly birthed continents, Enlil allowed himself a moment of tranquil contemplation. This was a fruit of his labors, the foundation upon which a new chapter of existence would be built. Let us begin, he whispered, not to his crew, but to the silent, expectant world that lay beneath them. On stood upon the precipice of creation, his eyes reflecting the nascent world below, his hands swathed in cosmic energy danced an intricate ballet over the sprawling canvas of earth. With a sweeping gesture, he drew forth the rivers from the ocean's wombs, veins of life that, that pulse and meander through the terrestrial body. See how they carve paths, Enlil, Anu said, his voice resonating with the power of tides. As blood gives vigor to flesh, so shall these waters invigorate the land. Enlil, ever the architect of grand designs, surveyed the world with calculating eyes. His thoughts churned with the undercurrents of the deep, each one a seed for a potential harvest. The rivers flowed at Anu's behest, but it was within their winding embrace that Enlil envisioned veins of a different kind, riches that swept beneath the earth's nascent skin. 
Indeed, brother, Enlil responded, his tone laced with anticipation, yet underscored by the heavy gravity of their purpose. Your artistry gives life to this world. Now we must sustain it through our own endeavors. As the first river completed its journey, cascading into a serene lake, Enlil turned away from the panoramic spectacle and directed his attention to the colossal machinery that, that loomed like silent sentience at his command. His mind reached out, interfacing with their dormant systems, stirring them to life with a thought. Initiate the extraction protocol, he instructed, his voice cutting through the calm silence with the sharpness of a diamond. Commencing operations, Master Enlil, came the obedient reply from the central unit, its lights flickering in sync with the awaking pulse of machinery. Enlil watched as the armada of mechanical giants began their orchestrated descent towards Earth. Their limbs, forged in celestial forges and imbued with the might of the Anunnaki, pierced the ground with surgical precision. Deep within the bowels of the planet, they sought the hidden bounties, gold, platinum, cobalt, diamonds, a glittering cache of elements and compound that would fuel the grand machines of their far-spanning empire. Harvest the treasures that slumber in the darkness, but do so with respect for this young world. Enlil mused to himself, his interior monologue a reflection of his dual nature, creator and explorer, guardian and conqueror. Are you not worried, brother? Anu inquired, his gaze lingering on the wing of the ripple spreading across the lake below. This world is still tender, its balance delicate. Concern is prudent, but our need is paramount, Enlil replied, his eyes never leaving the sight of the machinery delving into the earth. We shall tread carefully, but we cannot falter. The Empire's hunger is insatiable, and we are its providers. Anu nodded, understanding the weight of duty that rested upon their immortal shoulders. As the rivers continued to chart their courses, life began to stir within the nurturing flows. The brothers stood united in their purpose, a duality of creation and consumption, the internal cycle that propelled their kind across the stars. Let the land yield its wealth, Enlil decreed, a silent promise threading through his words, and let our legacy be etched not just in the annals of our people, but in the very soil of this blossoming world. The twilight haze of a dying star hung on the horizon, casting elongated shadows across the craggy landscape. In the dimming light, the Aijiji, their bodies encrusted with the dust of millennium, gathered in silent rebellion. Their tools lay abandoned at their feet, a metallic forest of refusal that glittered under the first stars, piercing the evening shroud. Brothers and sisters, bellowed Nusku, their leader, we are not endless. Our sinews have frayed, our spirits have waned. It is time we demand the rest that is owed. Murmurs of assent rose from the assembly like heat from the cooling earth each member's eyes reflecting the fatigue of unyielding labor. But even Didi's knew the weariness of toil. Let the Anunnaki hear our plight, one called out, her hands calloused, her gaze as hard as the diamonds she unearthed. Have we not reshaped worlds for this glory? Another question, lifting a massive hand skyward, as if to grasp the distant constellations that they once freely roamed. Nushku nodded, his heart heavy from the burden of leadership. He knew well the covenant of duty that bound them, yet he also felt the stirring of discontent. A dangerous ember in the tender box of immortality. Enlil must heed our plea. We seek only a respite, he declared. Will the great Enlil even listen, whispered a young, his voice barely audible over the rising chorus of demands. Are we not but cogs in his grand design? Silence breeds only more toil, his companion replied with a steely resolve. Our voices shall be a thunder, and he will listen, for the skies themselves cannot ignore the storm. As the night deepened, a sea of torches ignited, bathing the gathering in an amber glow. The Ijiji stood as titans among the flames, united in their cause, their figures etched into the memory of their nascent planet. Enough, Nusku spoke again, turning his gaze towards the heaven where the celestial ship of Enlil might pass. We shall strike as a hammer upon the anvil. No hand shall rise, no machine shall stir, until we are granted the solace we are owed. The air thrummed with the power of their convictions, and in that moment, the very stones seemed to whisper in solidarity, for the Ijiji were not merely laborers. They were gods, architects of reality, shapers of destiny, and on this day, they would remind the cosmos of their might. High above the tumultuous landscape of early earth, 
in the crystalline confines of his observatory, Inky, master of life's fabric and brother of the lordly Enlil, observed the striated patterns of DNA, coiling and uncoiling like celestial serpents. The Aijiji's defiance had reached its zenith, and with their ceaseless labor stall, the extraction of Earth's bountiful resources was jeopardized. Brother, Enlil's voice resonated through the chamber. The time has come for your artistry to birth a solution. My command is thus. Forge us a labor force. Inky's eyes, shimmering pools reflecting the myriad of stars beyond the confines of their high station, flipped towards a holographic display that sprawled before them. A new breed, he mused aloud, the gears of his prodigious intellect already churning to fashion such beings. It will require finesse and lil, delicate tampering with life's sacred threads. Delicacy is your domain, Inky, came the reply as Enlil's towering frame dissipated into motes of light, his presence retreating from the observatory. See it done. Alone now, Inky turned towards the array of primordial specimens collected from the verdant wilds below, a table of evolution's tentative experiments. His slender fingers danced over the controls, extracting a vial of luminescent Anunnaki essence, the very blueprint of the divine form. With reverence, he approached a containment vessel, where a cluster of simple primate eggs waited for his transformative touch. Will you be a crucible of ascent or pyre of abomination? He whispered to the silent Ova. His thoughts whirled with possibilities, each more intricate than the last. Visions of harmony and dissonance flashing in rapid succession. Inky's hand hovered, then decisively moved. A beam of focused energy lands from the device in his palm carrying with it the seeds of divinity. The eggs trembled beneath their infusion, their membrane shivering as they, as they accepted the cosmic gift. Life is an art, and I its reluctant artist, he thought, the weight of creation pressing upon his shoulders. But what form shall you take, my children? Will you rise to serve, or will you fall victim to ambition's folly? The chamber echoed with the hum of technology interfacing with biology a symphony of process and uncertainty. Inky's gaze never wavered from the sight before him, his mind adrift in the turbulent sea of consequence. Anunnaki and Earth twin by my hand, he murmured, the first stirrings of life beginning to pulse within the eggs. Will you mark the dawn of prosperity or the dusk of my people? As the earliest heartbeats of potential throbbed in the nascent vessels, Inky knew that only time would reveal the true nature of his creation. And in that moment, he stood on the precipice of history, a god poised between triumph and tragedy. Inky's chamber was bathed with the sterile light of progress, tendrils of mist curling around his ankles. The metal scent of antiseptic air filled his lungs as he stood over the sedated form of a primate, its chest rising and falling with a rhythm that belied the gravity of the moment. May your wound be merciful, Inky whispered, his words a quiet benediction. He had chosen this creature carefully, a robust specimen, untamed by the wiles of the earth. But with a hand that betrayed no tremor, he placed the fertilized eggs deep within her, where Anunnaki divinity met primal instinct. The seconds stretched in a minute, hours bleeding away as Inky monitored the fusion of worlds, his mind roiled with thoughts, a maelstroms of what-ifs and maybes. Will you be the bridge, he mused aloud, watching the primate's abdomen swell unnaturally, or the chasm that swallows us whole? Master Inky, a voice crackled through the intercom, sharp with concern. Readings indicate accelerated growth beyond our projections. Stay the course, Inky commanded, eyes narrowing. Their technology had never failed them before, but there was always room for abnormalities in the grand equation of creation. Yet as the days passed, it became clear that this was no simple deviation. The primate's body contorted with violent spasms, the life within fighting to emerge from its fleshy prison too soon, too violently, its nature rebelling against the unnatural order imposed on it. Containment team, stand by, Inky barked into the comm link, his calm voice blind the dread coiling in his gut. We may have unleashed more than what we bargained for. When the birth came, it was as if the very fabric of the chamber quaked. A visceral rupture split the air, a sound so primal and raw that even Inky, who had witnessed the birthing of worlds, 
felt the shudder pass through him. The monstrous being erupted from his mother's womb, a grotesque tapestry of Anunnaki ambition and terrestrial flesh, eyes ablaze with a savage light that knew no kinship. Seal the chamber, Inky commanded with a thunderous clap amid chaos. It must not. But the creature's cries drowned out his own, a cacophony of rage and confusion that mirrored the tempest in Inky's own soul. It thrashed arms, limbs flailing, a symphony of destruction born from the most sacred of creation. Life, Inky gasped, recoiling as much from the sight as well as the realization of his hubris. What have I done? In that instant, he understood the perilous threshold upon which they now all teetered, the thin line between ascendance and annihilation. And as the containment field sprang to life, encasing the abomination of his making, Inky could not help but wonder if this was the beginning of salvation or truly a harbinger of their end. The containment field hummed with ominous energy, its pale blue light casting long shadows across the chamber. The creature within grew at a staggering pace, its grotesque form swelling and expanding, muscles rippling under a patchwork hide of scales and fur. Inky watched transfixed as the monstrous being tested the limits of his prison, each movement more powerful than the last. Stabilize the fields, Inky's voice was a rip crack in the sterile air. Increase power to the dampeners. The Aijiji, labor gods fraught from the very elements they now wrestle with, scrambled to obey, their hands moving with practiced urgency, but fears tainted their every action. The creature's growth seemed not only physical, but also an acceleration and intent, a will to dominate that defied the natural order. By the breath of Anu, the Ajiji murmured, eyes wide as the creature's fists crashed into the force barrier, sending ripples through its energy field. It's unstoppable. Focus, Inky snapped, though his own thoughts turned like the primordial seas of this young earth. What had he birthed? An abomination? A new dawn? In the maelstrom of fury, the creature roared, a sound that scratched at the very soul. And with a burst of Herculean strength, it shattered the containment field. Shards of ethereal light dissipated as it lunged forward, free and ferocious. The nearest IgG stood no chance. Talons met flesh, rending the divine forms as if they were merely clay. Back to arms, Inky commanded, his voice betraying none of the horror that clawed at his insides. This was his creation, his responsibility. His mind raced, calculations, contingency, the weight of lost life. But the chaos offered no reprieve. The creature dispatched two more IgG with terrifying efficiency, their bodies crumpling like fallen stars into the cold floor. Enlil will have our heads for this, one IgG spat, brandishing his weapon, a staff that crackled with the fury of storms, as he stepped bravely into the path of destruction. Silence, Inky's rebuke was automatic, even if he admired the IgG's valor. He would not allow despair to take root. We must end this now. A coordinated assault ensued, a battle of desperation and determination. Energy beams converged on the creature, their luminous tendrils seeking to subdue the beast that defied them all. It bellowed, thrashed, but the onslaught was relentless. Contain it, Inky urged, his heart pounding a rhythm of primal fear and resolve. They were the pinnacle of creation, the Anunnaki. They could not falter before their own genesis gone awry. A final, furious cry pierced the air as the creature succumbed to the combined might of the IgG. Its massive form hit the floor with a thud that echoed like a death knell, and silence. A heavy, mournful shroud settled over the chamber. Is it? One IgG dared to hope, his voice trailing off. Dad, Inky confirmed, though the words tasted like ash in his mouth. But this is far from over. He turned away from the still form of his fell creation a tempest of thought swirling behind his stoic facade. Several other attempts would follow, each ending in tragedy, a cycle of birth and death that mocked their efforts to bend life to their will. Enough, Inky finally declared, weariness etching the lines of his ancient face. We cannot continue this way. There must be another way. The IgG nodded, their eyes reflecting the burden of their shared ordeal. They had been willing to participate in Inky's grand experiment, but the cost had grown too high. Another way, Inky repeated, more to himself than the wary IgG. His mind spun with possibilities, each more daring than the last. And in the quiet aftermath of destruction, the new seeds of a plan began to take root.
in the sterile glow of the laboratory where the boundaries between science and sorcery blurred, Inky stood at the precipice of his new creation. The air hummed with the primordial energy, charged with the potential of what was to come. His hands, usually steady, quivered as he initiated the new process. An audacious mingling of Anunnaki essence with terrestrial beings. Commenced the integration. A hush fell upon the gathered Ijiji, their eyes fixed on the delicate process unfolding before them. As he manipulated the instrumentation with deft precision, Inky's mind wandered. Could this union of celestial and earthly yield the solution they so desperately sought? Doubts gnawed at him, but there was no backing down. The egg, now suffused with divine genetic script, was ready for its cradle. An Anunnaki womb. Be the vessel of our salvation, he whispered to the host. Her expression, a tapestry of hope and trepidation. Days turned into anxious weeks, each moment stretching into eternity as they waited the outcome of this unprecedented fusion. When at last the time came, it was not with the violent rupture of past failures, but with the cry so potential, it seemed to herald a new dawn. Adapa, Inky breathed, holding the infant whose first gaze pierced the veil of uncertainty. Here lay their laborer, the progeny of a race conceived to shoulder the burden of the gods. Remarkable, voiced the IGG, peering over Inky's shoulder. The child's features bore the unmistakable mark of their kind, yet tempered by primal innocence that spoke of his terrestrial heritage. Begin the replication, Inky commanded, his heart thrumming with a cocktail of triumph and unease. We must forge our workforce ere long. The endeavor commenced with fever, the laboratories above with activity, as far more Anunnaki women offered themselves as crucibles for this nascent species. But the initial spark of enthusiasm soon waned, whispers of discontent threaded through the hallowed halls. Is this our purpose then? One woman questioned, her voice laced with disillusionment, to be mere vessels for these creatures? Creatures destined to free us from our toil, Inky countered, though doubt crept like ivory into his convictions. Yet at what cost to ourselves, challenged another. Our wombs are not factories meant to churn out these lowly beings. Their murmurs coalesced into a resolute clamor, echoing the internal strife that clawed at Inky's resolve. He had envisioned a seamless integration, but he had been too blind to sacrifice his deemed kin. Cease the process, came a cree from the collective, shattering Inky's blueprint for an immediate future. We will take part in this no longer. Inky's gaze swept across the faces of his kin, each mirroring his own turmoil. They were creators, not mere instruments of creation. His chest heaved with the weight of impending decision. Very well, he conceded, his words falling like stones in the silence. We shall find another path. As the women dispersed, leaving Inky amidst the quietude of his thoughts, he knew the onus of innovation rested squarely upon his shoulders. The Lulu must come into being. But how? The gears of his mind turned, seeking the elusive cog that would set his grand design back into motion. Inky stood alone in the dimly lit chamber. The walls echoed with the swirling glyphs of creation. Tubes and conduits snaked from the ceiling to the lab where a creature lay still, his chest rising and falling with rhythmic precision. The air was saturated with the hum of machinery and the tang of primordial fluids. Adapa, Inky murmured, watching as the first male's eyes flutter open. You are the progenitor, but not the accumulation. Father, Adapa's voice was tentative, as though unsure of his own existence. His gaze fixed on Inky with a mixture of awe and curiosity. Listen well, said Inky, leaning closer, his features illuminated by the ambient glow of the bioluminescent algae. You are fashioned for labor, yet it is clear that our methods must evolve. You shall be the blueprint for self-regeneration, the harbinger of a new dawn for the Lulu. Adapa sat up, his movement stiff and measured. To replicate, I do not understand, he confessed, his eyes searching Inky's for clarification. Life begets life, Inky began, his fingers tracing patterns in the air evoking silent commands to the devices around him. But your kind must do so without further taxing the Anunnaki. You will need a counterpart, a balance, a mate. 
The action resonated within the chamber, stringing the genetic looms of life. Strands of DNA danced like fireflies caught in the invisible breeze, weaving together the fabric of a new being. Inky's thoughts raced, calculating and adjusting, flowing through his mind like currents in a vast ocean. Will this mate, will she be like me? Adapa asked, a spark of something glimmering in his eyes. Hope, perhaps, or anticipation? Similar yet distinct, Inky replied, his gaze never leading the swirling helixes. She will be your equal, the mother of the Lulu. Together you will populate this world with workers who will ease the burden of the Ajiji. Will they have souls? The question hung heavy between them, laden with implications Inky had long ago wrestled with. Every being has a spark of the divine, Inky stated, though he pondered the depth of truth in his own words. It is not our place to measure worth by our own standards. Then it is a gift what you offer, Adapa mused aloud, his voice growing stronger with the concept of legacy. A necessity, Inky corrected gently, the last sequence initiated. A gift would imply a choice, but we are bound by our duties. The air quivered as the final piece slotted into place. A new egg, a glow with potential, suspended in a cradle of energy fields. Inky allowed himself a moment of satisfaction before doubt nipped at his conviction once more. Will she live? Adapa's question mirrored Inky's unvoiced fears. Life is a precarious balance, Inky admitted, his eyes reflecting the nascent glow. But I have faith in the resilience of our creations. Then I shall have faith as well, Adapa declared, standing now, his form casting a long shadow over the chamber floor. Come, Inky beckoned, leading Adapa towards the incubation cove. Let us witness the emergence of your companion. The first of the Lulu. Through her, your lineage will rise to fulfill their purpose. Together they watch as the egg pulsed with a glowing light, signaling the imminent birth of a new chapter in the history of the world of this young earth. A chapter written not only by the annals of time, but in their very essence of life itself. The air was suffused with the scent of primordial earth, a musky tang that hung heavily around the towering form of Inky as he navigated the lucent grove where his latest endeavor awaited fruition. The vibrant fauna, engineered for both beauty and utility, pulsed softly with the bioessence light, casting an otherworldly glow on the scene. Inky, Adapa ventured, his voice threaded with a mix of reverence and apprehension. This path we tread, it is unlike any before. Indeed, Inky acknowledged, his fingers tracing the sinuous vines that would wrap their way around the crystalline incubation pods. Inside each, a delicate dance of life was taking place, a blend of Anunnaki ingenuity and terrestrial rawness. We forge destiny with every step, Adapa, our kind with theirs. Will they understand us? Adapa inquired, peering into a pod where a small creature floated, suspended in nourishing fluids, its hands already capable of grasping, its mind ripe for knowledge. Understanding is a luxury of the gods, Inky mused his gaze lingering on the curled form, but they will know purpose. He initiated the sequence to begin the awakening process, their pods humming to a higher frequency as fluid levels begin to recede. A surge of protectiveness watched over him, an instinctive response to safeguard the life his science had forged from clay and evolution. Awaken, children of two worlds, Inky intoned, his voice resonating through the grove as the first of the being stirred. Its eyes fluttered open, revealing orbs of such depth that they seemed to hold the very stars from which the Anunnaki descended. By Anu's grace, Adapa whispered, bearing witness to the creature's first breath, a gasp for air that was both alien and achingly familiar. Behold, he said, his tone commanding yet infused with an, un an uncharacteristic tremor of emotion. The Lulu, born of our essence and Earth's flesh, my handiwork, our future. Adapa reached out tentatively, his fingertips brushing against the glassy surface of the pod, just as the being inside reached back, a mere movement that bridged the worlds. They are perfect, he conceded, awe coloring his words. Perfection is an illusion, Inky replied, allowing himself a rare moment of philosophical reflection. They are suited for the task. That is the measure of success. Suited to build, to toil, 
to free the Ajiji, Adapa trailed off. The gravity of their undertaking settled upon him like a mantle. More than that, Inky countered, his eyes narrowing as he watched another Lulu flex its limbs against the constraints of its artificial womb. They are the beginning of legacy. Through them, our presence will be enshrined in the annals of this world. Yet will they not long for rest as the Ajiji did? Will they not seek respite from their labor? Adapa questioned. The practicalities of their creation gnawing at him. Rest is earned, Inky stated flatly, the undercurrent of his own exhaustion bleeding through, and freedom even more so. They shall earn both in time, but first they must serve. Serve, Adapa echoed, the word rolling off his tongue like a sacred vow. Then let us guide them well, for in their servitude they carry our hopes. Indeed, Inky affirmed, his attention returning to the pods as the first Lulu took a tentative step into the new world that they had crafted for us. Let us guide them toward a future where service becomes partnership and burden becomes privilege. In the heart of young earth, beneath a sky pregnant with possibility, the first worker class drew breath. Their emergence marked by an indelible signature of Anunnaki ambition and the primer urge of life to persist against all odds.